Right here, if you said you had the man, he's got to get out of the way. He's coming to the last chance to stop before offering. What does that mean? Take this in, take this in. First round, first round, slow down. Welcome to Off Ramp. <laughs> ah, Melissa. Ever since I've known you, time has been disjointed. I don't know whether I'm coming. Or going, or just moving sideways, trying to get out of the way of a bus that's coming up and splashing through puddles. I just bought this suit, you know. I can't get stains out of fabric like this. It's foolish, I know, but I'm just trying to impress you. Everything I do is trying to impress you. Find the alligator farm. Learning how to drive a tank. Finally getting my Eagle Scout at the age of 33. But all this work, all this toil, it gets me nowhere. Time comes and goes. I think I look up. Taking a four hour nap and my watch has only moved up 15 minutes. Still, you haven't called me. No letters. No singing telegrams. What's a boy to think? Last week you did send me that one message. In the teeth of a snarling dog. I appreciate it. I don't want to say I done. I know it's the thought and all that. And that was my favorite sock. I don't mind telling you. So, Melissa, what's it gonna be then? Are we in? Are we out? I got to know. Or at least, I got to think I know. I have to reasonably be able to tell my buddies that I, that I know, even if I don't. So, if you could give me some kind of sign, some kind of message, smoke signal, government writ, subpoena, something. You could at least return my fish tank. My mom would really appreciate it. This week on Journey to the Underworld, we'll be visiting with Rocco. Rocco. That's not my real name. Rocco Incognito. That's that's nothing like my name. Well, yeah. Mr. Rocco, what in your estimation is the most important thing for a human being to consider? In their journey to the underworld. That's easy. Where are you going to conceal your lead pipe? Is it a back pocket kind of day or down the trousers? The underworld is a place with lead pipes rule. I see your point of view. Yeah. Mr. Incognito, we have a question from one of our um, oh. email listeners. They uh, wrote to us to say, to ask you, sir, this is all very interesting. Thank you for your wonderful program. I'm happy to be on. here. Um. Roger writes in. Roger, eh? <laughs> if you're on a trip to the underworld yeah. and the angel or demon who is escorting you yeah. takes a wrong turn, yeah. is it acceptable to give him or her a second chance or should you make them sleep like the fishes immediately? Roger. Roger, that's a good question, Roger. I think we're going to have to come over and talk about it. Now, you won't find your angels, your devils, your guides given too many wrong directions because really there's only one way in the underworld. Straight down. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Rocco. Mr. Incognito. Thank you. Sure. What else you got for me? Well, on this, uh, we've got another sort of general question on uh, 
it came about, I think, with the pipe reference earlier. What is lead pipe? Uh, the lead pipe reference. An eighteen inch length of heavy lead pipe. Lead pipe is not that easy to find anymore. It's is not it? that easy to carry and secrete upon your body. And you know, hide. Oh, well, perhaps you could give us some recommendation then about what is what exactly is appropriate attire. In the underworld. That depends on where you're going to lunch. Well, what? The most important thing. What would you recommend? If you're going to have a big greasy hand. Oh, and always wash your hands before you eat your rye bread sandwich because lead is poisonous. Uh -huh. Not just the way it smacks against somebody's head, but toxic. Oh, well, that was part of the reason I, it's hard, it's difficult to find, you know, true lead piping. You can wrap your lead piping in leather. But don't wrap the business in. Uh-huh. Wrap the handle. Okay. So if you're wearing a nice, if you got a double-breasted blazer and you're wearing that, mm. make sure you wash your hands. So you would suggest... Um, a, Three, four a, times a day. A simple... Four or five times a simple washing. Blue blazer. Simple blue blazer. Thank you. Pinstripes are rather ostentatious this season. Yeah, and sort of... And a fedora. <laughs> you can't beat a good fedora. Who who could question that? Because you can stuff things underneath a fedora, so if somebody comes after you with a lead pipe, boom! I'm just look what's under my fedora. Let's, um, yeah, you try copping me one on top of my noggin, and see what happens. It looks like nothing. A, it looks like a steel helmet. It's like a steel helmet, only it's callous. Elizabeth writes in and asks, Elizabeth, Mister Rocco, Mister Rocco, thank you for appearing today. Um, this is my pleasure. I don't have any lead pipe, but I do have a 12-inch length of balsa wood, which I ripped out of my son Timmy's paper airplane. That's a good start. Um, Timmy, you know, it, the enforcing of the uh, punishment on little Timmy's going to start with his balsa wood airplane, then it'll go later to his lead pipes, you know? I, I, I'm... i uh, You seem rather nonplussed. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm not... You you are an intriguing man, Mr. Rocco. Did you say intrusive? When is, um, if you wanted to just visit the underworld and not yeah. become a permanent resident. Sure, you can buy a ticket. Yeah. Yeah, you can w take a tour. What would the uh, procedure be for that sort of uh, a well, visit? That's easy. You just start walking. And eventually you'll be out of your own neighborhood. And eventually things get a little spooky. And the spookier they get, the closer to the underworld you are. It doesn't matter where you start. doesn't matter where you start, you wind up in the underworld. Okay? It Th takes a little bit of time. Thanks. Thanks again. Well, come and see me again sometime. Speaking of time, <laughs> that's all we have this week. <laughs> and I want to thank our very special guest, Mr. Rocco Incognito, uh, our guest this week on Journeys... To the underworld. Where's the music? Where's the soundtrack? Jimmy, cue the, cue the music. Music and Jimmy. out. Oh, we're going to have to come back and put that in later. All right, thank you. <laughs> wonder if we can hop this one. It's coming pretty fast. Seeing the open... Open cars. Yeah, we'll just have to grab on the side again to get up some speed ourselves. Huh? Which direction is that? Is that east? It's out of town. That's the important part. Well, looks like. Uh, is this um? I'm, all the towns are running together for me. Huh, I'm getting tired. You guys getting tired? No, I'm not really getting tired either. Then. I'm getting hungry. We're gonna have to find a, a house or something. Mm. We tried that once. Seemed like a bad idea. Well, I think we approached it the wrong way. <laughs> you mean busting in the back door? Like yeah, that? everybody all just running in like crazy people. Oh. We didn't know they'd react like that. I miss Larry sometimes. Well, we had to, we had to give him somebody. So, I looked at it, it was him or me. Well, him or all of us, really. I looked at it like it was you or you or him. Should have kept his pack. Was, well, you know, I don't have. mean to be... You know, crass about it, but we should have gotten more than a baked potato for him. Mm. Baked? It was a raw potato. Well, it's a hot day. He had the salt in his pack. 
Yeah, that's why I it's water rubbed. under the bridge. <laughs> it almost tasted salty when I rubbed my sweat on it. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. That was your sweat. That well, answer some questions? Well, well, it was really came off my shirt, but it could have been anybody's sweat because it wasn't my shirt. If you'd asked me a year ago would I be eating armpit baked potatoes, I'd have said, what? Well. What the heck are you talking about? I would have said other stuff, too. Mm -hmm. no. Last yeah. year, we thought we'd be in uh, Bolivia by now, living like kings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last year, I knew where Bolivia was. All I know is last year, everybody knew where we were. Amen, brother. That's all I'm thinking about right now. As long as Larry doesn't know where we are. Mm -hmm. Keep uh, moving, we probably probably won't find us. He didn't seem so unhappy. Really. So, it's uh, not him I'm worried about. It's whoever he says, whatever he says, too. Mm. Well, he didn't strike me as a talker. Yeah. Especially the way I hit him with that shovel. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Looking for the way out. Looking for the way out. I am in the market for a sandbar. I'd like to... Uh, Do you have a size in mind? Or a price range? Uh, or a size range, because really that is the nature of sandbars. Sure. Well, I'd like one, uh, you know, close into shore, easy, mm -hmm. uh, easy access. Okay. We have a number I'm of looking uh, for one that is... Um, you thinking coral reef or no coral reef? No, it's just uh, no reef, just sand. Oyster shoal? Sand, just silicate. Ah, sand. Boy. So the, silicate. We have several shades of sand. Mm -hmm. We have the white, white sand. Yes, mm, white. That's a little out of my price range, I'm sure. Yeah, black is is rarer, but it's, mm. it's no, trendy I'll just sometimes. Sort of the volcanic. tan. We have the... Tan to brown, tan to brown. We have the shingle stone. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm looking. It takes a fog beautifully. Well, is this for uh, an ocean or a pond? Is this for vacation or is, would you like to live there? I'd really like a naturally occurring sandbar that uh, is not in danger of being dredged. Mm, that's a little bit. Um, yeah. Things like that are kind of pricey. It's possible. We have done that for clients before. Um, there are no guarantees. There are some pretty darn good limited warranties. but We, uh, we do have anti-dredging insurance. Uh, unfortunately, nobody... Really qualifies for that. So. And we do have a witch doctor who can also uh, put curses on, in some of the more tropical zones. I, I really, uh, you know, I've seen uh, in in the in the sort of uh, you know those upper echelon magazines. Sure, sand, yeah. sandbars sand listed. And so uh, is that how you found us? By the way, I, I would. I, it Did was, you uh, find that? Uh, was that magazine uh, found in a, a dentist office? Or that's right. Then was that Doctor McPherson? By the way. Uh, I had to leave before the work was completed, so I didn't you get his didn't last get his name. name yeah. That oh. could really put you way ahead of the curve. Um, but I'm I'm looking but uh, depending on exactly what you need, what your needs are. Well, I'm concerned about these ones where they, you know, they're sort of semi-protected. You know, there's there's like you know birds and habitat. And well, if I can describe the the the, the normal situation on one side of the sandbar, uh, let's say the land side, you'll have you'll have Land, land work we call it in the business. Yeah, well, you'll have land work. The other side, you'll have a vast body of water. Uh, we might call it a uh, sea or an ocean. Ocean or a sometimes. Or, That's uh, uh, what have you. Bay. You can even do this in lakes, but I think what you're talking about, you're going to need something a little bit more protected. So between the the land work on one side and the uh, large body of water on the other, yes. the the um, the spit work, which is what the uh, sandbar is known as, is it's not actual spit. Just in case you're curious, I, I the, go ahead. The, the uh, the spit work. Is there anything on the market right now that you could show me, or even some photographs? Or are we talking lease or purchase here? Well, um, my concern is that I buy a sandbar, you know, one year and the next year, poof, it's no di sandbar. Yeah, it's disappeared. So well, it's you may find that there's <laughs> there's it becomes not a sandbar, but actually <laughs> becomes an island if yeah. you're not if you're not careful. Oh. And then there's you equilibrium know, is difficult. Incorporation to and flags a lot and higher oh. tax. Too. There's a lot. Certainly. Are you considering doing this in uh, off the uh, U.S. coast? Uh, yeah, only, only off. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. What about uh, uh, held territories out off the coast? Is that, is that uh, possible? Because there's some lovely things. It's just so. It, it, I, I really need to 
I'm going to build a bridge probably, so oh, okay. I need to have... From from the uh, Landwork to the uh, Sands Pit? From Trenton. Oh, well that narrows it down a little bit, doesn't it? Well, something in the way she took her shoes and threw them out the window of a moving car. And hit the policeman right in the face. Something in the way she took my eyeglasses and snapped them in half with just two fingers. Something. Something told me she wasn't happy. Something in the way she took my credit cards and charged up to the maximum. Something told me I wasn't coming home enough. So I bought out the florist shop and had him back the truck up and put every single flower arrangement that could possibly fit into the bedroom, the living room, the bathroom, and the kitchen. Smell great. Went to the candy store. Had a couple of wheelbarrows full of all her favorite expensive, truly decadent chocolates stacked up to the ceiling. And then I got reservations at a really fancy restaurant that had ridiculously expensive wine. And tickets to the ballet, which I hate the ballet, but she been telling me she wants to go. I don't think she likes it either, but she wants to tell all her friends that she went. So I had that all lined up in the house. When she got home from down at the plant, she looked a little surprised. (laughs) I thought, oh yeah. And then, when we were about through the fifth course at that ridiculously fancy restaurant, and half in the bag from all of that wonderful wine, Getting our stretch limo down to the ballet performance, I just had to know. I asked, sweetie, what was it that I did that got you so angry? What did I do this time? And she said, oh, nothing, honey. I just wanted to go out. She reminds me of somebody that knows everybody by name, I'll bet. Oh, sure. Sure. I mean, she knows some people by name and others by others' names. I knew her by serial number. Mm. I knew him by Dewey Decimal. (laughs) Dewey Decimal. I remember Dewey. Yeah. I knew her by shoe size, and I remembered them by water displacement value. Mm. I could recognize him by his atomic weight. Um, mm. From, you know, across a crowded room. Or, uh, well, I first met them at a party of incalculable mass. That's funny. Mm. That's funny. I recognized them by the predominant operating system they were using. Mm. Mm-hmm. There was a certain... They all looked like they came from the same area code, which yeah. had been recently changed. <laughs> Often, I would call out their stage name, uh, and in fact... It was the same as their given name. Uh, Very confusing for everybody but them. Sure. Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. It's funny, though, because if you call out his China pattern in the middle of a crowd, yeah. sometimes he'll turn around, sometimes he won't. He'll it's, weep, it's though. It's whim. He'll weep. Tonight, audience of art. 
the new tactical weapon. Overkill or just really cool? Tonight, in our studio, an actual demonstration of nuclear ant weaponry. Now you can't get these at just any... Not yet, Gary. Not yet. They should be out next August. But we do have in our studio audience the inventor of tactical ant weaponry. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. It's a real honor for you to come by the show. Why use conventional weapons... Why, indeed. ...against ants when you could nuke them? I mean all of them. You can get every last ant on the... You know how many species of ants we have on the planet Earth? No, I don't think anyone knows. I know. Well, I knew yesterday, but you're right. They mutate. They form new colonies. Mm. They turn into new species of... Wait a minute. I've lost my notes. See, that's something that those bleeding heart liberals wouldn't want you to know. They say there's ants, and they're meant to be there. Just use conventional ant therapy. One bullet, one ant. That's the old-fashioned thinking. But let me ask you this. You'll never get them all. What's the difference between an ant and, say, oh, a giant flesh-eating bird? As well, as far as, uh, you know, speaking from a biological standpoint. Well, biologically speaking, and I'm not a biologist, mind you. Very good. But in my experience, a giant flesh-eating bird is... Slow and easy to pick off with a twenty-two. I see. And, a, and an ant? An ant. You can dig mm. them. You can poison them. You can set them on fire. You can stomp them with your shoes. You'll never get them all. I see. Until yes. you can take a nuclear anti-ant device into your own privacy of your backyard as guaranteed in the Constitution of the United States of it's America. It's in there. It's in there. It's what our forefathers had in mind and when they decided to let us fry. have nuclear weapons in our backyard. Ants are highly organized. Ants are very crafty. And not only that, they'll come in the middle of the night and take your shoes. Is it true what That's I've heard that ants are actually uh, an alien type of species that uh, comes to this planet and are highly intelligent and actually have a technology in the vast cities beneath the ground, and they're actually plotting the overthrow of our democratic society. Is that really true? That is so incredibly true, and it's been proven both scripturally and historically. I knew it. Well, you brought some uh, some tape of uh, the tests of your anti-ant nuclear tactical radiation-loaded weaponry. Not only that, I've brought an actual ant colony right in here, and we're oh. going to blow one up in the oh, studio. Oh, great! Now, have these weapons been tested on humans? Uh, yes. Do we have tape on that? Um, no, no, we don't. Okay, I'm sorry. We blew the camera up, too. We didn't yeah. know it. We were well, a little close. Are we ready to blow this colony? Oh, I think so. Uh, this is a... Uh, Should we wear any protective clothing, anything like that? I brought these special uh, 3D sunglasses for you. That'll be great. That'll be great. Which will which will make this look like it's a a, an old two dimensional explosion in a 1950s uh, horror movie. Now something I've always something I've always wondered about these glasses. If you wear them wrong way in, do you see in one D? You actually see in lower case D. Oh, subscript. You know, this looks like an old-fashioned plunger-type detonator. Don't yeah, be looks fooled like by TNT that. Yeah, looks like TNT. Don't be pike. fooled by that. These nuclear... Uh, these nu- We're going to just blow the atoms right out of these ants. You watch what I'm talking about. Now, this is uh, found to be... How how uh, effective can we expect this to be? Oh, 110%. 110, so it'll kill the ants and other stuff, too. What? A hundred over a hundred percent. It would have to take out more than. No, just... don't bring math into this. It'll just confuse everybody. I'm sorry. Something reminds me of lint from the dryer in your hair. It could be the way you shoe polish the doorknobs while polishing the driveway. It's so charming the way you water the mailbox post, thinking one year it might grow or at least bloom. Little household chores We both Try to ignore 
wrapping the roof in aluminum foil in hopes of generating some solar energy, caulking the oven to help retain heat longer. Those little tips your dad passed along on our wedding night. This show was improvised by Gary Bass, Matthew Cowley, and Dave Waterman. Edited by Sheila Daughtry and mixed by Matthew Cowley. It reminds me of your meatloaf and all those secret ingredients that make me smile all the way to the office the next morning. <laughs>